Well, Dallas, man, I really appreciate you taking some time. I know you're busy and uh, getting ready for a show this weekend. But first of all, thanks a lot for joining me, man. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Oh, no doubt, man. Well, I guess we'll jump right in. Um, you guys are playing the show. Uh, you were at Sloss back in September. Uh, you're playing this benefit bash on Saturday. I'm not sure how much you know about the bash and what it does for Sloss, but have you seen the lineup? What are your thoughts on the lineup and kind of what, what can we expect from the show? I think it's a, yeah, it's pretty awesome. They're uh, trying to raise money and to help out the grounds there, which is, you know, it's a, something that, you know, they don't have to do, but, uh, and the, I know um, a lot of earth the guys that work sloss uh johnny and chad and um and johnny's always grimes has always had that kind of mentality of like uh jumping in and trying to if he, if you see something you know like because i lived in Broome for a while and like hanging out with it's kind of that mentality of like hey if we want something better let's do it rather than talking about it so uh um yeah and it's cool and the lineup is awesome i'm, I'm excited it's gonna i'm gonna I since I had a an accident and uh I've lost most of my short term and long term memory, but there's a lot of people that I'm that are gonna be there in the lineups that I haven't seen in forever, but I don't know if I'll recognize them, but I know that I was friends with those guys in those bands, you know if that makes sense. Right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I'll have to maybe have to wear a name tag and walk around <laughs> to people and well, they'll recognize but uh, they'll recognize you. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So, what have you got the set worked out? You don't have to tell me the whole set list, but what, how many songs you guys play, and what does it what does it look like? Do you know yet? I do not. So we um, this is we uh, I think we're gonna do around ten songs, but um, we get into Birmingham tomorrow, and uh, we're running out. I guess of some place there, uh, and figuring out the set then so it's uh it's always I guess funny to, well and it's it's kind of helped me a lot where it's like I tend to since my accident I've, I want to be so prepared and I overthink things like I'm like an old like grandma where it's like if someone I'm like do you need a I have a paper towels candy you know uh, <laughs> aspirin Tylenol you know like, I'm always and so I always try to plan, I guess, because of from the accident, just being sure I'm like have everything. Sure. And and I always had a, a bit of that before. So with this now, it's just like, hey, we're practicing the day before and we're doing. It. I'm like, all right, let's <laughs> let's go with it. Uh, uh, sounds, you know, it, it's it's more of a it, it beat. I mean, it's helping me almost heal more and. Uh, and get uh yeah used to uh, twist and turns but we've we we uh practice a lot with each other like whenever like you know we just played a fest last month so uh you know it's like we're kind of all uh but yeah i don't know what song we we might throw in some different songs or we'll see but um yeah we're excited to uh to be there and and to see you know a lot of people i haven't uh seen in a while so it'll be it'll be good now like i said you played furnace fest back in september that was the first show since when so we played a pre-show before it but it was like not so we did that but that furnace fest was the and and that show were the first shows we had played since 2014 so uh and uh yeah um so it had been a while and then my uh we hadn't played in a while and then my accident happened in 2016 so uh yeah it had been some many years and you know i didn't think i would ever uh ever do music again and uh and yeah just uh kind of just figure it worked to you know it's itself out in a kind of like way that's bigger than me or any guy that's in the band you know where it's like how it all came together it's like well you know uh i guess we should play music because something's putting this together that that isn't us us goofballs you know uh um there's something bigger uh orchestrating this and so that's kind of um yeah and and it's been uh 
from my accident, it would seem like it would be so hard. And it, I mean, everything I do takes, I, I go, I have to go on adrenaline because I deal with chronic pain and hurt every day. Um, but this like, uh, and this too, like this will wear me out, but, um, it, uh, it's just like, um, yeah, it just net. It's 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 been awesome to see something that uh that uh has kind of just um come without us even you know we 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 are all hard workers but just how it's kind of come together and you know and I think uh, I survived my accident to tell a story and to let people you know know they're loved and not alone and. And I've kind of seen life on both sides, you know, before my accident, I was a very depressed person. And after my accident, you know, uh, not, and you know, I, I see life differently and I see like the, the beauty and everything in life. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been pretty awesome. Um, with that coming to, uh, coming together. And I, uh, I think, even though I still struggle with pain and every day is a, a battle. I was telling someone this yet at the, I was at the um, hospital yesterday and I forget who I was telling one of the people that worked there, but I was like, it's almost like it keeps me hum not humble, but you know what I'm saying? Like every day I, I am so thankful for when I do get to feel, you know, and then, uh, and I had gotten shots in the back of my um, head where my skull meets my neck because I have horrible headaches. And though I'd had those about three months ago and before furnace fest, I had to, I didn't, I needed to have a back procedure surgery where they burnt the nerves off my, and I hadn't had that done. So at furnace fest, I was in bad shape and I did it uh, and played uh afterwards i was in the worst for it took me like a month i didn't i didn't even realize what was going on because all the adrenaline had worn off but um so since then i've had that where a few they burnt the nerves then i've had these uh deep shots in my lower back um and then in my skull and then uh so about a week or so ago i started feeling really bad and i had this appointment coming up and I thought it was just my brain was getting worse. And so yesterday when I got the shots, I was almost like crying. I was like, I, I was like, I know you guys don't hug, but I almost want to hug you. Cause it was like, I could feel the pressure, you know, like it was like, I could think clear, you know? And, uh, and yeah, even though it's still, um, still hard and has its different things, just something like that easing up a little bit has been like whoa you know I feel like I have like HD uh thinking you know uh it's it's been and so yeah that was yesterday so I am uh yeah it's I'm excited to uh to be able to um yeah play and and be more I guess clear-headed don't you know because with the brain injuries everyone's different but it's a lot of brain fog and like I feel like my head's a thousand pounds sometimes, you know, like even trying to get up, you know, it just, so, um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. It's pretty, it's been, these past day and today it's been pretty crazy. Uh, I'm, you know, like, I think I cried as I was leaving the, uh, you know, uh, the doctor, I can't produce tears. So they didn't yeah. know it, you know, but, uh, yeah. And so, yeah, it's, uh, and I still have my challenges, but uh, every day, but that just alone, I'm not, I think it wearing off and I'll know it, it, if, if you've, if you've dealt with something for a while and then you get it fixed and then when it wears back off, like, that's when I realized I was like, I didn't realize how bad just that week had gotten. Cause I was used to not having it so bad, but I think it was a gradual, um, now the shots were off, but yeah, after that, I was like, I didn't, gosh, I don't even know what, that was bad, you know, and I'm like, yeah, maybe we need, I need to plan a few months, I mean, a few weeks sooner this next time, or, but, uh, yeah, that's, and so that happened yesterday, uh, yesterday 
uh, around lunchtime. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to to be there at Furnace Fest and to be not as out of it as I was. I wasn't as out, but being able to think a little clearer or, you know, like uh, that was just kind of a, I don't really, and I don't, my memory is bad. So I don't remember playing uh, Furnace Fest, but I do remember, I remember different things. I remember talking with the people afterwards and how much that blessed me hearing other people's stories. So I look I really am looking forward to hopefully getting to talk and meet with um, people. Um, yeah, this Saturday. I think I'm looking forward to that more than anything is just hearing other people's stories. Or I get to blabbing too. Sorry about that. I got no. I got you're good. Track thinking. So I'll, no, you stood I'll out. Keep... I think after the show in September, you stood out by the uh, merch tent for probably two or three hours, at least a couple hours, to talk with people. We were out there and, and met you, and uh, so did you enjoy that part of it. And I, and I was even, it was crazy because I was even, but I was going on such adrenaline, that part, I don't remember playing at all. Well, if, some, if I see a video, then I'll know, oh, I did that. I have no memory of that. But I remember sitting and talking to people and hearing their stories. Uh, there was one guy, he was in a, a, a wheelchair and uh getting to talk with him and like, you know, and be encouraged. And I think I like that part. I've always liked like meeting and talking to people, but now it's like, that's why I believe I survived my accident is I believe we're here to how we love our families and treat our family and how we are remembered when we pass. And so, you know, it's like, uh, we're here to, love others and be in or you know be there for others and be impacted by others and you know what love is the the main key to that but um yeah so i uh i remember yeah at furnace fest i got so much out of that that it stuck with my memory which uh is doesn't doesn't remember a lot uh huh. Talk about the accident. Most people know about it. I don't know if I've heard you go into a lot of detail. I know you cracked a lot of bones in your face. You still got eye issues. What happened? Do you remember what happened that day? And just kind of take me through kind of what all effects were from it. Um. So I was living in Birmingham at the time, and I was down visiting my family in this house where I grew up. Uh, it's like born and raised in this house. And uh, my parents had gotten a four wheeler, and I was, I don't even know how they got, but I was always a daredevil, like a, always that kid, you know. And and I, they had gotten one, and I was riding, and my mom had made dinner, and and uh, and I was like, I'll come in and in a minute, I'm just gonna ride one more, but I wasn't trying to do anything crazy. And uh, there's a church next door, and there's like a little dip by the church, and I guess when I came on the dip, I was not sitting, but I was kind of like crouching on it, you know, like, uh, and I guess the dip made me start moving and I went to, and my hands are sliding and I went to hit the brake to slow down and my hand rolled the gas because the gas and the brake are on the same handle. And I just tried to correct it and I stayed on it, uh, and our next door neighbor, which we live out in the country. I mean, I wish I could walk you out there. I mean, no one hangs out here, you know, it's, uh, he, he's, a, he has, uh, he's a welder and he had a sign for his business, but loading up and I hit that face on. And I guess by that, I was probably getting up to 30 or I don't know. I mean, I was, I was, I was going pretty fast by that time of me hitting it. Uh, and my face hit the handlebars and, um, I don't know how to knock the teeth out, but it pushed these teeth back. And then the whole folder landed on my head and I didn't have a helmet because I didn't think I was going to, I wasn't doing anything crazy. And, um, yeah, uh, I broke every bone in my face, um, broke both my jaws. I have a hundred percent fully blocked carotid artery, which you only have two going to your brain. Uh, I had two trauma strokes, so I can't, feel on this side of my face and this eye I can't feel but I can see out of it this eye I can feel but I can't see out of it uh I broke all the bones in this ear and then the 
the foot pedal went all the way down to the canal in this year. So healing and the reason I wear eye patch and glasses a lot is uh my brain, like if you're shooting a gun, how you'll close your up eye to see with your dominant eye and thinks and my brain thinks if there's lights, if, if it's usually a dark room, it's not as bad as I can relax, but that I'll end up doing this because it's thinking it's gonna, but it's not making any difference. My brain just naturally thinks, well, if I squint, it's gonna see better. Um, so, uh, um, I, uh, yeah, I, uh, what else should I do? Um, oh, and so this eye will track even though it can't see and I can feel this eye. So when this eye feels dry, I don't press tears, I know to put. Mm fake tears in this eye mm. um and the brain injury the severe brain injury is still the main thing i suffer with uh um i damaged my lungs i like my arm like the bone like next because they live on the country so my next door neighbor down there one of them he's like man your arm is pretty so gross looking dude and i I was like, oh, yeah, he's like, yes. When they were putting me in the helicopter, he's like, it was just flopping everywhere. But um, uh, damaged my lungs. I had to have a lung operation because I couldn't breathe. Um, I had, you know, I had the, a trach and, and the feeding tube. All that just to help me get better. But um, uh, so with the brain, my neurologist, and I've gone through a, a a few now because one moved away but i remember he said something to me that i like, hit home is i was like how can i get better and he was like you're kind of a lone wolf i've never really got to talk with someone with your injuries that's either alive or not like the infant stage of like a two-year-old wow. and he's like just keep trying you know and so like at the time it was like broke my heart because i was like oh you know and then uh um but uh yeah, I realize I am. It's a, it's only a mir you know it's a miracle in my life, only by the grace of God. Uh, even the main trauma the doctor was like, there was a power greater than me that took over while you lived. Uh, and months later, my my I was with some with my mom somewhere, you know, barely getting, but we I think we were in the grocery store, and some guy just goes, "Hey, Dallas," and he had recognized, and he was my paramedic. And he goes, we don't know how you didn't drown to death. And he goes, it took four of us to lift that foiler off your head. And it was a, it was a big, big foiler, one of those, you know, one of those. And uh, he said that the foiler was on top of my head, but I was face down, and my head was submerged in blood, like the blood was over my head. So he's like, we don't know how you didn't suffocate, suffocate on your own blood because you know it was passed. Uh, and I remember my mom telling me this when they first washed my hair. They're like, I guess he has hair dye. And there was that much blood, like, uh, in my uh, hair. Because they had to, they didn't do any washing. I mean, I was like a, one of those cases where it was like someone always on me. And they could, they were afraid to do moving any of my head because of the blocked carotid artery. They're afraid if any of that broke off again it would uh they were thinking it would kill me so it was like a ticking time bomb and i still have it but we realized it was torn so um it's still if, if it was to break loose or anything yeah it's bad uh, but um yeah i uh i live you know i realize how um fragile life is and and uh, and with the lung they did the operation they shot all this like it's crazy uh, how science you know they went up through my groin through my heart into my lung and shot this like metal string they told me this afterwards because i probably would have been freaked out to fill up the air that that wasn't letting my lung get the right uh oxygen and if any of that breaks loose yeah it goes straight to your brain and another string. so um but uh, yeah i it's a i've always been i'm you know I'm not one of those people that's like, well, that's a mirror, you know, because I'm not one of those people that wants to uh, misuse a word or whatever. Um, but it really is, it's a miracle I'm alive. And I, uh, 
I know one of the main reasons is for me to tell, you know, to give hope to people and to be, you know, um, to let them know, like, you're not alone and there's a God that loves you, uh, you know, and, uh, yeah. You mentioned that on stage. I mean, just your, your gratefulness to be alive is evident every day. Isn't yeah. It? It, 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 and there's days, you know, we all do every person you get down, you know, or life's not the funnest. And so there's days I, you know, there was days when I'd wake up and that I would go, God, just let me go home. You know, I like I'd call, you know, I'd go, I'm like, this pain is so bad. And I was like, I can't keep doing this. And I would go, you know, I was like, you wouldn't leave a, an animal uh, to waller in misery. You know, you put it out of its misery. And, uh, and my, you know, my family would be like, you're still healing. Your miracle still happening. Speaking of dogs, one of our dogs is crazy. So I've got one too. So. Um, you're good. Um, and uh, Gabby. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and uh, so getting down those times or whatever, but I, you know, I, I did know I keep fighting and, uh, and I do keep healing and it's, it's pretty, it's pretty wild how uh, the brain just keeps healing and, uh, and little miracles always, I think with any person they can happen, but you have to open yourself up to, to them you know like i had tubes in my ears for years because i cr crushed all the bones and that's the only way i could hear and and if i tube would fall out it'd fill up a fluid and um a few years ago it fell out and it just healed itself and it was like weird you know it's kind of i was like this is that was kind of i think the start of maybe me going maybe i should should do music i mean little things like that you know where i was like this kind of crazy i didn't this ain't supposed to happen and so uh yeah uh it's a, it's am, a yeah it's a crazy story do you ever sit back and how often do you go back and kind of recall what happened my memory's bad so i i it's real i don't a, a lot well, and I can't, I don't remember any of it. One time I woke up and I relived it. I thought I went unconscious right off the um, the bat. And that's what our song, we released a song and it is pretty much that to a T. Um, and, uh, and I relived it about eight months later. I woke up and I, and sometimes with PTSD p people, sometimes constantly relive it in dreams or whatever well it's only happened once and thank god it only happened once but uh um i don't know if you can cuss on here or whatever uh um so when i wrecked in my head the first thing i heard, i was saying is you just fucked up you wrecked the four-wheeler get up and i was squirming and that's when i went out and a girl riding a bicycle out here um came up on me and I think when she came up on me she saw me moving and then I went out so she said to the paramedics I you know he, there's he's died this is a you know, dead guy and I've still never met her for a long time we thought it was like is that an angel like who was it because no one knew who it was and I and then we finally found out but it's just traumatized her so much and I, I could see you know like when you could pass an animal that's squirming to death and kind of makes you feel so sure. even though I'm, I've made it it just really messed her up and uh but yeah so that one time I relived it uh I remember that when I wrecked it the four being on me and thinking I have to get up and and so I was rubbing this bone because the hand was off and the gravel trying to get up. And so, you know, squirming. And, uh, yeah, that's the only thing I relived to. And uh, it's right next door. So the first time that I was able to, in, th in therapy, you know, trying to learn to walk again, all that, well, I walked down there and it was a pretty heavy for a long time, I would walk there, and uh, yeah, it, it would mess me up. Uh, and you know, 
always re- make me realize how you know thankful but also is a is a is a hard thing but uh to relive knowing that that happened but um yeah but every day i i just wake up if i'm hurting or what and i am every day but uh just i realized by the middle when i stop hurting how thankful i am and that's kind of a where it's like almost like sometimes i think like would i want to have the other eyes see again i mean i would but you know it's also a constant reminder of where i find my hope or it's it's like a con like a not humbling but it constantly keeps me super um and i guess the brain injury is like that too but i'm i just have no filters i just speak straight from my heart I, sometimes it's very awkward and a good but i'll just i'm that kind of person now that if i see someone i'll be like man you're an awesome person to some stranger and we all have that but we you know gosh you maybe say that no nah, i don't want to you know bother them and like me now i just don't care i just i'll i'll do it uh and i'm very thankful for that and i think a lot of it is me having the brain that and always battling the pain and and, and uh every day it, yeah so as far as long-term tours that's not really a, a possibility as like a two-month 60-day tour for you as far as the pain goes you, you can't do that can you i'm hard-headed enough uh if adrenaline would work i would uh try uh but I'm constantly healing right now. No, I mean, if we'd have to have days off and I'd have to have, uh, like I sleep, I have a lumbar pill that I have to sleep with because I still have back pain and they're scheduling to burn the nerves off again because they've kind of woken up. But, uh, and I've been looking up different, um, back doctors and neurologists and trying to find, you always find, uh, our different, I make my own pills and it's like, you know, any anti-inflammatory thing from uh, cinnamon at, to ashwagandha to like stuff, you know, like, and like I, I'm like a little, I always joke, I'm like, one day I'm going to be like the my pillow guy. Like I could never find a medicine that didn't work. And then I made mine and it's made in the USA. Hey, he's, uh, make, he's making millions of dollars. So I mean. yeah, he makes everything. Now. So I'm like, maybe one day <laughs> that would be hilarious. This is disaster. Taylor's magic bullets. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if, if, you can, if you can prove it works, people will buy it. It, it. The crazy thing is, it works well. It's um, it keeps me off the. It keeps me off pain meds, you know. And that was a hard thing. Gosh, I never. That was the hardest thing to quit, and I quit that cold turkey but gosh i thought it was only going to be a couple weeks and it was like months for me to regrow my endorphins and all that um but um yeah the stuff i'm making my pills it uh it it and i've just found a new thing it's called boswilla and it's not new i mean tons of people probably know about it but i have cerebral edema so i have tons of fluid on the brain and one of my biggest challenges is all the dried blood on my brain and all the pressure. Florida is not the best state to probably live in. Like I really am when there's a storm, I can tell you when there's a storm about to happen, I get like flu like symptoms. I hurt all over. And it's like every time, like, like clockwork. Um, and I think all the humidity, it just, it's like, I feel like my brain's like a, my, a Coke put in the microwave, you know, getting ready to, um, but, about four weeks four weeks ago i think now i found that boswilla has been proven to help cerebral edema the fluid on the brain by 70 percent. but it takes up to eight weeks so i got about another four weeks to see if it's working but i'm constantly just trying to look up things uh mm-hmm. that might help you know um and uh and add that to my my little uh medicine uh what thing uh, but uh yeah uh i get off on tangents so i don't even know where we're at down oh. like <laughs> you, you could have easily even though the chance of music 
represented itself to play as a band and play some shows, you could have easily said, no, I, I hurt too much. You had a million excuses you could use not to do this. What does the music mean to you? What, what keeps you coming back? Uh, and I'm not trying to sound cheesy or um, over the top, but it really is for me to get out what I've got, like, like the song we released, it it was like therapy. I mean, like I would cry, cry less because like it was me getting out that pain. Uh, you know, the the first verse, I tracked on a mic in here and still trying to get off pain meds. I didn't even know how to use a recording program. I just, someone had given me something and I was like, you know, from my heart. Uh, but um, I decided I wanted to start or the dream to want to do music again was I wanted to reach. And I said this and it got, that's why this, at first all the guys probably thought I was crazy because I was sending them all these like little clip that's on garage band. That was like bad, but I was like, I want to try to trap emotions on recording. And that's why I said, you know, I'm not the song cheat because I'm not like, oh, so archy, but like, I, that's what I wanted to do is like, if I can get across to someone what I feel or what I've gone through, it'll help them and it will help me. But that's kind of what drives me is, yeah, because it's not fun. You know, like people always ask me, like, are you excited about playing? And I mean, I hate to say this, but no, it's miserable. Um, there's nothing like I don't have that anymore where it's like this is gonna be awesome or I'm so exciting in my brain it's I'm thankful but it goes you're gonna hurt did you pack your ice helmets and all this because you're probably gonna overheat and when I overheat that fluid comes pour. it's crazy like it it will pour out of my nose like a faucet so that's why I, I always used to spit on a play but now I because it's like if not there's going to be and it's not snot it's just this clear liquid um so i have to prepare all that you know it's like well here's what you know and alabama and uh heat you know and uh so but, but i it's almost like i just this calling and i feel to me of like that i feel god's put on me is like you survived you know, and I and I don't ever ram my views down someone's throat. I used to when I was younger. I realized I did more harm than good. But, uh, but me, I feel like God's like, um, I saved you from dying, not because like you're this great special person that just might, but that I could rewire like while you were. Die, I could almost rewire your brain to let you see life differently and to be the person that you were always supposed to be or needed to be. But, uh, like I always thought the third eye was some hippie stuff, and I never believed that. My brother, I, you know, I was like, ah, oh, my brother was a hippie and a lot, but, um, I believe that's like our eye to God, and I believe like that's why when they say like a child or, or, you know, faith. And that's why I, I don't get too deep, but for me, and I believe that going through her or a breakup or, you know, um, getting like let down with, you know, a, the label or whatever, it's like these sheets we put over this eye to, to God. And when my accident happened, no joke, it I as it was like one of my buddies, and that's why I, because you know some people might think I'm crazy. Like, what are you talking about? But it really to me as clear as it all. Oh, it was like I could hear God going, "You fucking idiot! I love you, and I've been screaming in your ear for all these years. You thought it's been me, and it's not. It's been because like before my accident, I gotten so bad that I." Days before, I remember I arguing with my mom. I said, either uh, God hates me, or I don't know if there is a God. 
And that was just a few days before my accident, you know, and if anyone knows my life and I grown up playing in like Christian heavy bands and all that, but I get so depressed that I was like either, and I've never really talked, this is the first time I'm really talking this in depth, but uh, uh, yeah, I was like either, I remember in the same room, because this was our living room, so now my bedroom, and I was like either, if, if, if there is a God, it hates me, or I don't know, my mom was like, Dallas, that's not true, and uh, and then I had the accident, and yeah, it was like, as loud as like and I have tendonitis so I have constant ringing in my ear always but it was like a lot of work but just like you idiot I love you you know and that's why I almost felt like in a joking way and you know I've I've never done it but I've heard a lot of people like when they take uh like DMT dimethyltryptamine that it uh you know because we produce it and we it comes out the most when we're born and when we die. But anyone that's ever, I guess, taken it, it says it's like almost like the closest that if there is a God or, you know, and I've heard other people like that, it like just breaks you down where you're okay with dying. Mm-hmm. And I think another thing in my accident, I think I did release a lot of that too, but I really do believe, yeah, it was like God just screaming, like, I love you, idiot. You know, like now, you know, now you listen all right let's 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 we got some work to do and that's why i don't ram my views because that doesn't do any good and and it and just a lot of people my closest a lot of my closest friends don't believe the same and it, but my accident they have a lot of them have been like dude there's got to be something now it's just freaking weird you know and like uh and you know, I uh, I just want my heart to shine, and I hope people can see that in me. But I don't, um, I don't have any intent now to argue with someone or or try to force anything. Or and I'm and I like hearing people's. You know, I I just love talking to people, and 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 I think that does more healing for people and you know uh and good uh so yeah that's why i keep coming back to music is i feel like i have this uh call on me that's like you survived and and you survived for a reason that's to give hope to people that just like you before your accident that you know had lost them as all hope now you've seen the both sides of the coin so tell others you know you don't have to go through uh, something as brutal as an accident to see the difference and so that's the kind of like my like i have a call on my life to uh, tell people you know it's like hey it's not as hard as we make it because life i mean life is hard but we make it think it's so much more complex and when a lady's wiping your ass and you have a catheter in, you know, like the most beautiful thing is seeing the sun, you know, and I was in the hospital and it's like the most basic things become huge and the things that I worried about, find all that kind of deteriorates, you know. Uh, Perspective. Yes. Yeah, it's perfect, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you a question. You may not remember this. You said you have short and long-term memory issues. And this has probably been 15, 20 years ago. You guys, when I guess you were first starting – you played in Tupelo, Mississippi. I live in Tupelo, outside Tupelo. Do you remember that at all? Gosh, I so I remember and I remember playing Tupelo. Now um, there was a skate park we played one time in Mississippi. Um, I remember that there was a kid that used to put on shows. What was that band? I think called Joan Zeta. Um, but his brother played in a band called the Color Revolt, and he used to put on shows around Mississippi. But um, and I remember playing. Uh, hold on, I think I do re- remember playing Tupelo. Uh, this was a venue that had a huge. It's called um, Rockwell Center. It's got a huge stage, probably eight feet. But you guys played on the floor. 
You didn't play on the stage. You played on the floor. It probably held 100 people. There were probably 200 people there. I think I do remember that. Um, I'm trying to th- it's see weird things like that in my memory. Or it's like, I say it's like the internet where like, you know, like if someone triggers something, it'll mm-hmm. come back. But it's usually like something like if I saw a, a picture or something, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, yeah, you know, like or mm-hmm. somebody will be talking to me and they'll mention, remember that time we hung out? And all of a sudden I'll go you're eating a hot dog and it's like that's the only but i think i i think i do remember that i uh i i i remember playing those if it was when we were first starting is uh the excitement of pulling up to a venue and and we were just as excited as everyone else was there you know and it was like a mutual thing of like What's mm-hmm. gonna happen? And, I, and it's kind of funny because we're the ones playing. We're like, "Hey, this is gonna be cool," you know. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and people are like, "Well, it better be." <laughs> Open to watch you play a good show. And we're more like, "Yeah." That's a, you know, always, you know, like uh, Jim Carrey says something I love. He was like, "Life's the this is the best movie I'm watching right now," you know, in mm-hmm. life. So I think I do remember that, but I. Uh, if I saw a picture, I remember, but I remember playing those early. And those were the, that was the best, uh, yeah, cramming in or, you know. Um. So the single, Burn the Witches, um, the lyrics are pretty clear. Um, yeah. Know, it's just pretty obvious that you got that out exactly like you wanted to. It seems a little, a little heavier. Is that on purpose? Yes, I think. Um, I think it was like I was as bad as it gets. I mean, I could barely talk, you know. Uh, the side of my mouth used to stay open because I, I was paralyzed in the side of my face. And so, like, I never thought I would do anything. You know, I was this very weak, frail person for so many years. And I think I even looked way older when I was like, I remember going, my parents took me to their, a chiropractor because I was trying everything and I was walking like an old man, you know, like I would walk like my hunched over and, uh, and I was like that. And, uh, and by the grace of God, I've met some amazing people and by just things that I can't explain, you know, getting better, but it was this kind of thing of like, I want to put out something so heavy where people were like, that guy shouldn't be alive and how was he putting out something so so heavy so it was like intentional like you know um you know it's it's a miracle i'm alive and and that's a miracle i'm playing music and i'm going all out with it and the idea of the song is it it we're pretty hard so we went through so many renditions and we're actually working on other ones but we just pick it apart i think you know older we got we're too hard on ourselves and it's good because i think this next one we're working on is going to be pretty uh yeah it's, i think it's going to come out pretty awesome and the the others but um uh it was that and it used to be more structured different but it was that the first parts were me after my accident like right after when i was still conscious and so that's why it's like you stop kicking when the air runs out it's like i'm hitting on dead see if she puts out it was like when i was still there and then the next part and it changed a little bit but it was me fading out to you know um to death almost or as close as you can get and i guess you know i did get as close as they didn't know if i was even brain dead after you know so and then and and, it, and it's kind of like that verbatim because when i relived that i that i did remember a few seconds after my accident and then i went out and when i woke up i thought i was at the hands of a serial killer i i couldn't walk you know talk my hand was strapped to a, a bed i couldn't see i couldn't hear it was the, as as bad as a nightmare as you can think that's what it was like you know my mouth wired shut uh and uh, I like thought I was movie. in this, yeah, I thought I was in this dungeon of a serial killer. 
I couldn't see it was in a hospital. And, uh, and then when I kind of, I mean, there was a lot for me coming to before that, you know, like, uh, they had to like hit my feet and stuff to see if I was not brain dead. That's how they kind of got like my heart rate changed from my feet getting hit. Um, but, uh, when I first, cause when that happened, I was so out of it, you know, I was, and I was so weak, but then there was times where when I first started coming to, it was like, and when you have a brain injury, you do things and you don't even know what you're doing. Cause you're not thinking you know, like, I mean, I think the first time they asked me to stand, I pulled my gown up and showed everyone my butt, my butthole actually, and then flicked off everybody in the room. I don't even remember doing that. I was out of it. Uh, they remember. But the other part of the song is that kind of like coming to and fading out, you know, cause that, that happened a lot when I was also like, I would, and we would call it overdoing, but I would be like one time I woke up, this is when I was on, um, the watch where they have to watch you nonstop. And this was in the trauma unit. Like, uh, I don't know how, but I woke up, ripped my trick out, ripped my IVs out, started on taking my arm and was trying to stand and they ran in, but I had already done all that. And, uh, but I was barely moving, but in my, I guess my subconscious was like, I want out of here. And, uh, yeah. So a lot of that song is about coming to and fading out, coming to and fading out and petering on that. Am I going to live or die? And and re- reality, when before that was petering on, is he dying or living? So mm-hmm. that kind of, uh, yeah. I was watching some, we're talking about new music. I was watching some old videos today just to kind of refresh on some songs I haven't heard in a while. The Open Your Eyes video. Could you make that video in 2023? No, and we wouldn't anyways. Uh, but that video was, gosh, that that whole album is, uh, is a crazy, very crazy thing. Uh, and we... Uh, it was kind of like our label had gotten, you know, we were basically sub, where we were late, owned by a major label that we were on. And it was like pretty much you need to do something different or we're not going to really push it. And so we're like, all right, you know, like um, I'm tired of being a, I'll do whatever, you know, like not whatever, but okay, if you're really going to push it, then man maybe i can really help and so we went with a different producer all different stuff and we kind of just didn't argue as much and we just went with it and uh that song wasn't even supposed to be on the record that was supposed to be a b-side and our label was like that's going to be your single and we were like no it's not in the right yes and like by that time, we were so upset, and we're like, just forget it, and I had, uh, with a good buddy of mine, Scott Hanson, like, I had just met him that, but we just kept shooting treatments back and forth, and we are like, let's make something <laughs> the odds, uh, as crazy as it gets, and uh, yeah, and, and we didn't even go out for the video, uh, we just, and so he, he filmed it, and that video was crazy, because at first, the first pick was, uh, Tony Todd, who was in that movie Candyman, mm. uh, and he backed out a day before, and some, and we had already paid the Scott already paid deposits, so rushed around, and Danny it was like he agreed to do it, and uh, yeah, and it was, it's it came together really that the the girl I think Leah, she went on to do um has been in movies and do, do did well and. Uh, and then uh how was her name? Devin Penn. Like she does a lot of B movies, um and other movies. But uh it was cool to have them in it and kinda uh but yeah, I don't think you could make that uh I mean you could make it, but uh yeah. I think uh that album was a weird album. I, I was more vul- I was more real on the album lyrically than I think I've ever been well not new stuff, but than I've ever been. 
that was how I was trying to get out what I my emotions was in the lyrics because it wasn't coming out and the music like I wanted and uh we don't uh we don't really play any songs off that record we we used to but um lately yeah and there's some songs on that record that I still do love and I and I'm not I I there's parts that I do love about that record but um yeah uh I like the uh, the rim. So um, and we'll probably play songs, maybe more often. But yeah, that was a weird. That was a very one of the darkest times, besides before my accident. That kind of was that all led up to where I'd gotten in my accident. You know, before that whole ordeal and all that, I had just gotten in a dark place of like, you know, uh, life's horrible and not fair and. Uh, and so that's why my accident is really such a gosh that had made such an impact. But yeah, um we live in crazy times nowadays. Uh it blows my mind all the time at uh just how I it's just how like scary and careful of anything. Uh Everything can be taken the wrong way, or anyone can be canceled, and uh, it's crazy. I think what will happen is it'll happen so much until people are like, and they've already said this that the younger generations are kind of seeing the uh, the the one or whatever, and going, I don't want to be like this. And I'm not saying all millennials are like that. I'm just saying the the stereotypical one and they're like i don't want to be like this and so it will i think come around but it is very uh i always say it as like i have ocd and i'm and i'm, I'm not, and i believe in god but i'm not going to go around telling everyone you better praise me for ocd and loving god and if you don't i'm gonna freak out about it like Mm -hmm. really like i grew up in a hardcore scene where like we used to get the crap actually sometimes i punched that and stuff for having our beliefs and being because like some music don't and no christian mm -hmm. heavy music in in our scene you know or in tampa we the metal scene was like that's where death metal started you know uh, yep. and um well out of Orlando, but in tampa but um and so i guess i've seen where i'm like i wouldn't yeah that would be like if i tried to do that gosh people would hang me up you know like or you know like uh but nowadays it's like no matter what anyone thinks if it's like this kind of where we think you better like it and and if not i'm be angry and that's why i'm more that's why i say i don't try to ram my beliefs because it is your times where i just love people and i want to i hope to impact people in a way deeper way than having an argument or a debate with them because we can see where that gets us and gosh it's and we're i think we're as divided as it could probably get from politics to uh views to anything like it's just so far extremes and and it's hard to find a middle ground and so it's like uh yeah it's it's wild last couple of questions I, I love talking to people in in the heavy music scene there's always i grew up in the country so i grew up on country music so same I had, here see i had to go find metal how did you stumble on it what, where did it come from was there a family member did you just slip up on it who who were the first bands and how'd you find heavy metal so um my brother is 10 years older than me. I'm like the baby. My sister's eight. Uh, and my other sister's six. So uh, my brother, when I was really little, like, let me hear, like, Slayer. And that, I was so little, I didn't know. And, like, it still stuck with me that uh, Neurosis, Enemy of the Sun record, it scared the crap out of me so bad. And it's still one of those records where, like, if I play, they're like, oh, this is, like, some bands say they're, dark and i'm like no listen to this and i'm like that's dark but um i grew up went seeing so many country artists that 
the strawberry uh, festival here in uh, Polk County, Florida. We'd always go to it and I've seen so many artists. Uh, and uh, yeah, first I think just said everyone was uh, John Anderson, who is, gosh, I still love, I, man, thinking of, co we always talk about covering songs, but that's something we should think about covering, but <laughs> seminal, seminal win. But um, I, uh, I had seen so many artists and I remember that I had, that had you know the old tape decks like you could record the radio stations onto mm -hmm. a cassette mm -hmm. and i had done i think rap and rock and my dad was like you ain't do and like made me re-record all of it over with country music um and i had i mean my dad the the church where I had the accident and next door there's a church uh southern baptist uh my dad was the music leader and my youth pastor like uh and um i went to another church like camp and there were some kids that were skaters and i thought it was so cool because i did you know this was a dirt road until i was 10 now it's been paved but uh and i thought that was crazy and they let me hear a band called overcome and i was like there and that's when they're like dude this stuff's christian i was like there is no freaking way i never heard stuff that heavy ever mm -hmm. um and they're like yes and i was like you're full of crap you know and they're like it is and just that band like lit something in me where i'm like holy dude this is the most amazing thing and then uh i think me being so far out in the country you know uh and which is funny is when Maylin started, some people were like, oh, they're just making up a gimmick. But anyone knew me, it was like, that's what he should have been doing all along. Because that, you know, like I grew up, you know, uh, Central Florida is as country as it gets, uh, you know, as much as Mississippi or Al and Central, the Central area. But, um, and I think I, that was my way of rebellion is I just was like the heaviest stuff I could find. And, and I really just embraced hardcore more than metal well, and the metal hardcore scene but you know like uh oh, um like uh bands like you know earth crisis or all out war and like uh even it's it's cool to have but you know like i remember like living sacrifice i thought you know like when i was in high school i made uh we made a horror movie and i wish i could find on cassette tape and living sacrifice uh their old album i can't even think uh like their their second or first album was the second song off that was like part of it so uh yeah i just really and my parents are so amazing that i don't know why but they would um uh, when i was at that youth rally i'd met someone and he really got me into other more hardcore and he lived in he moved he was staying up here with his family i think he'd gotten some trouble with his aunt or uncle and he went back to St. Pete. So I kept in touch with him. So my mom and dad would drive me down on the weekends to St. Pete and let me stay for the weekend. And I was like 15 years old, you know, going to this place called the Refuge or the State Theater, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. seeing uh, uh, bands like, you know, a band Shiloh or Overthrow or Strong Arm, you know, um, mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's it's crazy to think about i was like man my parents were all you know and i played bass my brother told me how to play bass and i played bass in like an alternative band and i was like already playing around when i was 14 or 15 but uh yeah just that stuff you know and i was like man my parents they were as they're awesome you know because like my mom let me skip school my high school year to go my friend took me and went saw hate breed the mm -hmm. state theater in st pete uh so yeah that's I think just from being out here, um, yeah. How is it with you? Sorry, and I get to uh, to, to rambling. No, it's funny you say it like that because it's the same thing. We had a place here in Tupelo called uh, Christian Supply. It's really where you got Sunday school materials and that kind of stuff. Yes, but they had a music section, and I remember um, going and finding POD uh, at that time. Yes, MXPX was in Christian bookstores at that time. Yes, uh, Living Sacrifice. And there's a there's a band that's playing Furnace Fest this year. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're called Ninety Pound Wuss. It was an old yes, I love band. Ninety. Yes, they're playing Furnace Fest, and I cannot I saw that. wait. 
to see that show. I, that album, yes, I was, uh, I was big into them. I don't know what was the the Crucible. I can't think of, but there's been Stave Saker. There was these other bands, yeah. Plank Eye. They were all in the Christian section. Yep. And yep. Tooth and Nail was like the coolest thing ever. Like yes. they even had a Tooth and Nail booklet. Like yep. that, like people wearing merch now. Yeah, that's the coolest thing ever. Uh, that yep. yeah. So I, same kind of thing. Yeah, same exactly. Thing. Which is and weird I because... remember. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. go ahead. You're good. I remember people around here going, "That's devil worship and music," mm-hmm. and they would sit and talk with me. And I was like, "No, the lyrics are about God." And when Under Oath started first started which the guy moved st pete he started on uh, on the original under oath with me uh luke martin and um and i was like when i we first started playing i never want to be a singer i was just a bass player and i wrote lyrics but he's like Dude, our singer quit which wasn't even a singer you know we were just and he's like you're it and i was like i don't want to but okay uh and i remember our first demos or whatever we made them on four tracks and i remember getting having people sit down with me and going you're being uh moved by say you know saying i'm like no it's not and then my you know my parents when they started seeing people would write letters to you know because back then you put your address on things and like saying you know like uh i found you know god and you guys or I, i was thinking about wanting to kill myself and i'm not now and then my my mom and dad were like whoa maybe uh and my mom and dad were never that like close mind i think at first you know my which to this day if i put on i would never put my head in around my dad i don't want to annoy his ears you know and they come to shows he does my mom's passed a, a little over a year ago um but uh they saw always come to shows but uh yeah uh but they've been pretty open but at first you know they're like what is this racket there's no way this is about god the same even music first off <laughs> you know especially country uh did you grow up on like a 80 like the 80s country like the or was it early 90s old? i'm 43 so late 80s early oh 90s. same yes yeah. yes I'm, for, yeah. I'm 43 too i just those ex- exact same things and you know the, the tracy birds and the that kind of stuff was yes now here we had classic rock radio but it was it's always ACDC and Skinner and Secrets, the same 12 songs, you know, all day. Yeah, so. I never even got to even listen to that stuff as much, you know. <laughs> it was more of like, we're going to go see Reba McIntyre, Vince Gill, or <laughs> Doug Stone, or uh, yep. I saw George Jones, but no show Jones. He didn't come out, so Tammy <laughs> came out instead. Why not? And so, like, uh, I'm so thankful that I got, I saw, you know, Charlie Daniels play at Dollywood, yeah. you know. Uh, that was one of our vacations, you know. Um, yeah, I saw John Anderson because he's from Florida. Uh, I think a many a time, but um, yeah, and that's what I, 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 I still wear a lot of. Country, well, they're all worn out, but you know, one of my favorite shirts is the Confederate Railroad shirt. And yeah, I, uh, I, I still like them. <laughs> that was some of those songs that alt country stuff. I still, I still like because um, yeah, there's there's some rock influence in some of those guys. I think. Oh yeah, eighties gun. Oh, those were the crazier rock stars, and I mean, those That's true. they were a wild bunch. I mean, Johnny Cash, Merle Haggard, uh, Christopher Stoffson, Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings, you know, Hank Williams Jr. I mean, those were some dang. Yeah, they were people didn't mess with them. You know? Last question, I'll let you go. Any kind of, and if you can't tell me, don't tell me. Any kind of hints on when we might see some new music or yeah uh, i kind of handle a little bit but we are we're hard on ourselves but we are uh yeah we're we're we are uh pretty close i think to uh to finishing up um um another uh our release and another uh single uh still not there we're picky but it's getting it's closer to the end stages closer than uh closer to the end than it was in the beginning but uh and there's some other songs that we we just haven't gotten there and uh but uh yeah so i i hope hopefully not not too long uh people will be able to hear 
on some new stuff. Uh, and I'm still, you know, a lot of it is I'm st- I have been still healing. Like I said, just a few months ago, I had the back th- uh, procedure and surgery and I had the head. So it's like, that's kind of held up a little bit with us, you know, like, because when I do things straight on adrenaline, but I'm, I'm able to, to do a little more, um, the more I push. So, uh, that's getting where, um, I think it's gonna start, you know, like I tell like the guys, it's like, it really is for me. It's like, it's almost like a brand new band and, and in my head, cause I, it's like, I'm starting i've been it's all new you know it's crazy it's like i'm getting to live a new life so it almost feels like a brand new everything even though i forget i forget (laughs) doing this but it feels like something new and and uh and i think because of my memory i don't remember things so it uh it uh yes so i um yeah we're i'm excited and uh yeah, hopefully, you know, like I'll say, uh, it'll uh, resonate with people, and you know, they gotta get on it and get get more stuff out. But um, yeah, we just want to try to uh, make something that people can relate to or connect or can feel, you know. Um, and that's why I was saying, like, not to be not cheesy, but you know, like a lot of people say that, like, oh, I'm just trying to do this. You know, it's like. Not that way, as 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 real as possible, you know, uh, uh, just, just something that might help someone feel the same emotion or bring up emotion in them of like, you know. So, I, but I think we're close with uh with uh with one that we all kind of are like, yeah, we're on we're on to something for ourselves, even if we're the only ones that like it. We're all kind of like, yeah, we're 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 on to something. I think, mm-hmm. but uh. Yes, hopefully not too long. Gotcha. Dallas, man, I really, really appreciate you taking time. It's a, Same it's here. a pleasure, it's, man. This has been – it's been awesome. I uh, – yeah, I love having talks, and thank you for having me on and and, and, and be a part of sharing, you know, your night with you. And whoever listens to this, thank you for listening, and hopefully – uh, yeah, I, I think these – things like this are awesome. So thank you for letting me come on. Pleasure mine, man. Pleasure mine.